do you describe the present state of, of humanity? Uh, in my view, the humanity today is uh, far removed from uh, true uh, religion. Uh, there has been reaction of the organized religion in a large part of the world. Uh, people have some liking for spirituality because without some spirituality they can't find peace. But uh, very few people today have uh, faith in a living God who uh, interrelates to their lives. Uh, people have started having uh, feelings for preserving the environment for themselves and for their uh, next generations. Uh, but uh, uh, it will take time that the majority of the people would feel that way. And how do you, how do you account for the, the fact that, that religions seem to all believe in, in a similar um, grand design, and yet there's such discordance between the various religions? Uh, this is very interesting. In my view, there has been only one religion. All religions, when they started, they were from God and they were for humanity. So messages from same God to humanity at different times in history in different parts of the world have to be the same if they are from same God. So in my view, only one religion has been there, religion of uh, submission to God and uh, religion which provides peace for man with his fellow beings and peace with his creator. And that means Islam. I'm a believer in Islam and Islam teaches me that uh, God has provided for guidance of humanity uh, at all times. And the Holy Quran, the Holy Book of Islam tells us that there have never been a people for whom God has not provided for this guidance. So in my view, all the religions, the revealed religions which we find today, although they look very different on the face, but at their origin, they were either the same or very similar. And Islam is not a new religion in that sense. It's a progression of religion and it is the summit in the evolution of the religious process. So. I always ask also, uh, what, what term, because everyone has a different term for the, for the being that they, they consider their creator. Uh, what, what is the term that you would use? Uh, we use, uh, as Muslims, we use Allah. And uh, the, na the distinction of this name is that while the other names, God, Krish Krishna, Brahma, etc., they are used for uh, beings other than God also. But there is only one name in all the language of the world which is the personal name of God, and that is Allah. This name is not used for any other being. So we call that force, that creator, as Allah. And this is a tough question, huh? but I ask this of everybody. How would you describe that force? I mean, obviously, it defies description, but within our limited means, how would you define that force? It would be very difficult for me to define it if I were going to define it because I know very little about the Creator who created me. But the Creator has been very uh, kind. He has provided us guidance on what He is and what is His relationship to us. Uh, Allah, uh, for a Muslim, is the Creator, the Sustainer, and the Owner of everything in this universe. That being who created this universe who sustains it and who cares for it is God, Allah. So how would you, how would you describe your personal relationship with, that, with Allah, with that force? My personal relationship with the Allah is uh, like the relationship of a son with his father or a son with his mother. He is personal in the sense that I can always call upon him for the smallest of my needs to the largest of my concerns. When I am happy, I thank him. When I am distressed, I call upon him. I am told that even if I miss a lace of my shoes, I should ask him to provide it to me. So for me, my God is a personal God. Although I know he is the God of everyone, of the universe, but for me, 
he is like father about uh, whom I wish that only I am the focus of his love. If it's not your personal aspect mm -hmm. also, mm -hmm. uh, can you describe a powerful experience? I mean, often, uh, it, it, although they may always be with us, uh, I'm sure that you know, there are moments when you've had particularly powerful moments of experiencing Allah, or the force of Allah. Uh, since uh, it's a frequent uh, feeling of being uh, uh, under the mercy of God, feeling His presence, but I would mention, like to mention one particular event. It was in December of, uh, uh, in the year of 1982, I was in Nairobi, and it was uh, a month of fasting. During the month of fasting, there is a night which is called the night of decree. That is a special night for which people, the believers wait and they try to pray much more than at other times. I was lucky to have that opportunity and there was a time during that prayer that I felt under a spell which I can't describe. It was feeling of complete peace. It was feeling as if I'm the, in, in, a, in the control of some, some higher being. And it was feeling of serenity which I have uh, not experienced uh, uh, at other times. So that was my personal experience of uh, present in the being in presence of God. That, that sort of leads to my next subject here, which is love. And love, love has different meanings for different people. It's not just the, obviously towards men and women. It's it's the feeling of connection. Um, how in, in your in your native language, what what is your word for love, and what how how is that word defined? Hey. In my na native language, which is, which is Urdu, uh, that word is mahabbat, and it is derived from Arabic. It is also used in our holy book. Mahabbat is that force which pulls you toward the object of your love, and you want to please him at every cost, and you want to protect and save him at every cost. When this love relates to Allah from uh, a human, that would mean to remembering Allah and uh, to seek His protection uh, in every moment of one's life. So I would uh, define love as that force which pulls you toward the object of your love. You want to be close, you want to be as close as possible. How would you describe, what, what are the steps for people to find Allah, to find that force, the Creator? What are the steps that a person needs to? I would like to answer it uh, in two ways. One is that uh, as created beings, it would be hard for us to find the Creator. Were He not to help us uh, in, in, in letting us experience Him. The Holy Quran tells us that if we try to find Him with our eyes and other senses, we would not be able. But he is kind. He brings himself in front of us and uh, he makes his uh, presence known to us. Now, how do we uh, find him? Uh, we find him by remembering him, by worshipping him, by trying to uh, imitate his color. And by his color, I mean his attributes. I would give example of uh, one attribute, that is attribute of mercy. If I become merciful, I would become close to Him. If I become compassionate, I would become close to Him. So, the method of coming close to God is try to become like God in the limited sphere of, uh, sphere of uh, human possibilities. So, the way to get near God is try to become like God. You can really see how far humanity is from that at this point. Uh, yes, that, that is our concern. Yeah. That is our concern. Um, so how do you relate the force of Allah, the force of, of God, with the force of love? How do they, how do they relate? God is all love. And uh, uh, he has created humans to be 
recipient of his love. The relationship between the creation and the creator has intrinsic uh, uh, bond of uh, love. The creation cannot find real peace unless it gets connected to the creator and uh, this connection between the creation and the creator uh, is the love of the strongest uh, types. And the love we see between father and mother, <coughs> for their children, between husband and wife, between close friends, this is a reflection of the love God has created and the most refined degree of love which we find is between uh, mankind and when they recognize their God, their love for uh, God is of the most uh, uh, supreme quality. How would you describe the force of death? Death is uh, misunderstood by majority of the people and they dread it because they find it is an end to life. But uh, this is uh, a great misunderstanding. Death is not an end to life. It's a gateway to the real life. In this world, we believe we are living for uh, a few moments. And death brings us at the doorstep of a life which is never going to end. So death should not be a matter of fear. It should be a matter of anticipation. Uh, if you have uh, been living in New York and uh, you come to Vancouver for a few days, when you are returning, you should have feelings of anticipation. I'm going to meet my family, my wife, my parents. I would be, I would feel uh, at home again. This should be the feeling of uh, a servant of God because he came from him for a few days in this world and he is returning to him. This is what we are called uh, in the Holy Quran that uh, thinking of death, you should remember you came from God and you are going to return to him. So for a Muslim, death is not a, a cause for concern or a thing to be dreaded. It's uh, because everyone who dies is going to a better place where he would be happier, where, where he would uh, not have any trials. The life after death would be a life of rewards. So everyone who understands this is happy when he is experiencing death. So within the context of the grand design, which is obviously, uh, you know, we're humble people, we may yes. not answer that. Um, our, our brief life, what, what is Allah's design within the context of, of giving us, granting us this short period right. of consciousness to this moment? Again, uh, Islam tells us, and this is uh, uh, a tradition from the Holy Prophet of Islam, Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, he said, that God has told me that I was a hidden treasure. I wanted to be recognized. So I created Adam. I created humans so that they could recognize me. And he gave faculties to humans so that they could uh, understand God. They could uh, appreciate God and then they could uh, love him and they would uh, try to become like him. This was the purpose of creation of humanity and to enable humans to achieve this uh, uh, purpose for which God created them. On one side he gave them faculties which would enable them to achieve this purpose. On the other he subjected everything in the universe to serve man so that he can be helped in achieving this objective. So this is the grand design of creation. What is the purpose of, of the tension in the world, um, the restlessness? We become, how would you account? Sorry, sorry, okay. sorry I interrupt you. How would you account for the, for for human beings um, struggle? Okay, I, I I would take your first word. Uh, you said restlessness. Right. A human soul would be at rest only when it serves the purpose for which it has been created. If a pen is created for writing and it doesn't write, is not able to write, then it's no, a pen cannot be at peace. 
We humans have been created to be recipient of love of Allah, to be the object of uh, His uh, uh, grace and appreciating uh, His uh, um, being kind to us. And if humans do not recognize God, if they do not remember Him, if they do not relate their lives to Him as Creator, they cannot find peace. The reason for restlessness in the humans is because they are confused. They want to have peace because it is intrinsic in their hearts. They crave for peace, but they do not clearly know the source of peace. They, they, they know they have to find someone who would give them peace, but they do not clearly know who he is. So they are like a child whose uh, toy has been lost and they are trying to fi find it in this corner or the other, not knowing where they would find it. But they do know they have to find him and unless they find him, they would not uh, find peace. So the restlessness in humanity today we find, in my understanding, it is due to our confusion about our Creator. Unless we know Him, unless we make our Creator part of our existence, we cannot find peace. So in our moment of death, the person who has found that inner peace and has found that, that connection with Allah, uh, that connection with love, uh, what's the difference between what they bring in their death to the person that hasn't? Or do, do you see that there is any difference? I, I don't In understand words, this question. Um, let's see. Some 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 beliefs state that what you what you acquire in your life, the experiences, mm. you add them to the knowledge of God upon death. I don't know if that's a Muslim belief or not, but but what you experience and what you gather in your life, the love that you felt mm. that you've that you've made a part of your being mm -hmm. uh, at your moment of death, you you add that to to the mix. You add that to to God's knowledge. That's that's some beliefs. Maybe we, that's not a, a Muslim. Uh, I don't understand how humans would be increasing God's knowledge. We cannot uh, add any iota to what is God's. Uh, but from another angle, I would say that uh, uh, God has created all of the humans to be recipient of his mercy. In other words, God has created every human being so that ultimately they would be admitted into heaven. Heaven would be a place of nearness to God, a place of realization of God. And uh, those humans who have uh, correct guidance and they follow this guidance in this life, they are admitted directly to heaven. They are welcomed at the gates uh, with the uh, cheering. But those who either do not get right guidance or uh, they do not follow the guidance, uh, they cannot go to heaven directly after their death, they have to go to a spiritual hospital uh, and there uh, their spiritual ailments would be cured. The longer, the more uh, serious the ailment, the longer the curing period. But once they are uh, uh, cured of their uh, spiritual uh, ailments, they would all be admitted into heaven. So in Islam, we are told that uh, paradise is everlasting. But hell is not. Hell would be like a hospital where people uh, come for their treatment and they stay as long, only as long as it is needed. A day would come on hell, we are told by the Holy Prophet, that its gates would be wide open and there would be nobody inside. Everybody would ultimately have been admitted into heaven. And the Holy Quran says that God has created uh, humans to be recipient of his mercy and Allah's mercy would prevail over all other of his attributes. So it logically follows that all the human beings, whether they have been good or bad, should ultimately be in the place of God's ultimate mercy, and that is heaven. Well, this leads me to my next question, which is how it's designed, mm -hmm. which is purpose, our personal purpose, our, pur pur our, our purpose for being as an individual, as a species, as um, creatures of God. Um, what is our, our what, what is purpose for a human being? Right. 
Islam tells us that God has created us for the purpose that we worship him. By worship, it doesn't mean that God has a need and we would uh, worship him and his need would be met. He wanted, he was a creator. He wanted uh, his creation to be such as would recognize him. So the purpose of creation of humans is to create a being who would recognize God, appreciate his beauty, and be drawn towards him in love because of this beauty and uh, come closer and closer to him. This is the purpose for which humans have been created. Um, how are you pre preparing personally? How do you personally prepare to meet your death? Again, I would refer to as I am taught by the Holy Prophet وسلم, that every evening when you go to bed, you review what you have been doing during the day. If you have uh, done something which is in line with the purpose for which you are you have created, you would feel satisfied. If you have done something which would displease God, which has taken you away from where you were going, then you would feel bad about it and resolve that you would uh, uh, make amends for that. So every evening, uh, as far as possible, I do uh, have a reflection uh, whether I am ready to die this night and uh, most of the time by, by Allah's grace I feel that if I uh, die this night I would have no regrets. So the preparation is to be re-evaluating how I am behaving in view of uh, the guidance I have been provided by God. I ask this also of everybody. Is there, is there any specific part of your body that you feel um, love? You mentioned your heart, obviously, our, our purpose, or a sense of, of God. Is there, is there a specific body, parts of your body that, that sense that? Yes. I would refer to it by, uh, as heart. Uh, but heart, uh, the physiologists say that heart is only a pump. Religion tells us that it is the seat of emotions, as brain is seat of uh, uh, logic, thinking. Um, our emotions take place uh, uh, in a part of our body, and the religious language says it is the heart. And uh, we are told that this heart is the driver of the humans. The Holy Prophet of Islam has told us that there is a is an organ in a body, if that is uh, uh, in a healthy state, the whole of the human life is healthy. And if that is corrupted, the whole of human life is corrupted. And he said, listen, this is the heart. So the spiritual heart, wherever it is located in the body, that is the uh, center of love and our emotions. If you could ask Allah one question, was there any specific question that you would, any answer you'd want to know? Now, if you are asking me a question to find out any truth, God has uh, given us so complete a guidance that uh, I have been thinking about this question since uh, I received uh, an idea what you would be asking me. And I could not find anything which I want to know and I have not been told. But if you translate question as a request, I would always love to ask Allah again and again, my Lord, have mercy on me. And would you ask that because you, 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 when, you, when you evaluate your day's events, I mean, do you, do you live according to, do you live consistently according to your beliefs? Is that, I mean, it's, a tough, it's tough for every human being, yes. I would imagine. Um, obviously, you, 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 you focus on that probably more intensely than the average person does. Um, how, is, how, how do you succeed at it? It's, the feeling is that you have not done enough to justify yourself as a grateful servant of the Creator. So whatever you do, there is a feeling at the end that I have not done enough. And to seek mercy of Allah, mercy of Allah means 
that uh, whatever I have not been able to do, uh, ignore it. And uh, shower your mercy on me and compliment uh, what little I have done with your grace. So a true servant of Allah would always have feelings that he needs constant showers of mercy of Allah. Otherwise, if mercy of Allah is not there, no one can, with his or her efforts, be able to fulfill the purpose for which God has created him or her. In, in a perfect world, in, in, in the perfect world in your view, uh, what would the world be like? I know it's a, it's a broad question. Hmm. As I stated earlier, nothing can be nothing can result in success unless it fulfills the purpose for which it, it has been designed and uh, created. We have been created to be recipient of Allah's uh, love and mercy. And, and uh, reflecting in our lives the uh, beautiful attributes of God. My ideal world would be in which every human being would have adopted the color of God, the attributes of God. And I, I'll give you only one example of uh, ad, uh, adopting the attribute of mercy. Imagine if all the human beings in this world would become merciful, there would be no conflicts, there would be no hatred, there would be no rancor, there would be no fights, there would be no uh, destruction in the world caused by one human for the other. It would be heaven on earth. And this is for what uh, uh, God has given us guidance. If we follow that guidance, our heaven would be this world. I hope you don't mind. I'm going to throw one last question here because it is, what is the force then? What is the force that is acting against God, God's wishes? Uh, no force can act against God. But God has created uh, for us in this uh, spiritual uh, uh, universe, two forces. The forces of angels who encourage us to do good and the forces of satans who entice us to do bad. So I would not term uh, the force of uh, satan evil against God because it is created by God and it is created for a purpose. If Saturn were not there, then humans would not be above angels. Because an angel is a being of God which follows God's directions like the part of a machine. As humans, we have been given choice. We have been told this is right, this is wrong, and we have been told you are not forced to do right. You have the option of doing right or the option of doing bad. And to exercise this option, it is the duty of Saturn to entice us to move away from God. And it is the duty of the angels that they uh, remind us again and again, uh, you have to go this way. And Saturn comes again and again, tells, no, this is a better way. So this is, uh, this is what uh, differentiates between humans and angels. If Saturn, uh, static forces were not there, the balance would not be created for arranging a perfect uh, uh, situation where humans would have difficulty going uh, to become good. If satanic forces were not there, everybody would be a pious person. But would that be of any value? No. The real goodness is to be good when it would be easier to do bad. The real goodness would be to give to a destitute person when you are yourself hungry, to deny a comfort to yourself and come to the help of a person who needs, maybe needing it more than you. This is goodness. And this can be created only when there are angels and when there are satans. I just want one more elaborate on that. Because we talked about this earlier, but I don't know how, what your opinion is. You see a lot of the world. Would you say that the balance, that the world is balanced in its, in its forces of, of good and bad, for lack of a better word? I mean, would you say that more that's almost tilted towards, more towards 
it sometimes appears that there is more uh, evil in the world than there is good. Sometimes we are tempted to have this feeling more, more most, but if we see it uh, uh, carefully, there is goodness everywhere. Uh, by nature, all humans are, are good. Unless there is a very strong temptation, a person would not tell lies. A person would like to help a person in need, but uh, uh, continued ignorance uh, uh, to the needs of others hardens uh, uh, the hearts and sometimes we see that a person is in dire need of help and uh, a passerby goes without helping. But these are, uh, these are exceptions. Majority of the human beings are still good at heart and they would like to do good whenever it is possible for them, even at the cost of some inconvenience. That, that was great and I thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.